One of the biggest challenges for both schools and parents is engaging reluctant readers. And we know that it's probably proving even more of a challenge while students aren't able to access the school library and bookshops in the same way that they would usually be able to. So during this video, I'm going to point you in the direction of some material that students can access online so that we can encourage them to still be reading, but also some strategies and material for engaging more reluctant readers. As teachers, we sometimes encounter children who tell us in very impassioned voices that they hate reading or books are boring or even proudly claiming that they've never finished a book or don't own a single book. And it's vitally important that we work as a team to challenge these negative perceptions around reading for pleasure, because we know that unlocking a love of reading is crucial for student success in school. And we firmly believe in the statement below. There is no such thing as a child who hates to read. They just haven't found the right book yet. And we need to support them in finding the right book. All of the um, research and all of the case studies just proves time and time again the power and importance of reading. And this first point that reading for pleasure is a more powerful factor in life achievement than socioeconomic background completely encapsulates this and demonstrates why children need to be reading outside of school, not just for acad academic purposes in school, but reading for pleasure. We also know that reading for pleasure forms well-rounded individuals. So we know that students who read for pleasure have higher levels of self-esteem, a greater ability to cope with difficult situations. Reading for pleasure enhances empathy um, and students are more aware of themselves and others' identities. So we're encouraging students to develop emotionally and socially as well as academically. And all the evidence proves that reading for pleasure um, is important for personal development too. There are a few reasons why a student might be reluctant to read, um, but they usually fall within two main categories. Either the student struggles with reading or the student has not been reading content that they find engaging. Now, in order to truly understand an extract, whether that's at school in a geography lesson or a science lesson or even outside of school, a reader needs to know around 95% of the words within that text. So obviously this... Um, demonstrates that reading outside of school for pleasure will impact reading within school. Students need that vocabulary and that understanding of reading that they've developed outside of school and those skills that they're honing in order to access the curriculum in a more meaningful and thoughtful way. So it's vitally important that our students are reading outside of school because this impacts how they read and how they understand inside of school. So what can we give reluctant readers to engage them a little bit more? Now, audiobooks are a great way to do this because students may have negative feelings already entrenched about even the act of reading. So they may find that sitting down with a book and, you know, reading across the pages and holding the book, they might already have some negative associations with that. So audiobooks is a great way to change that experience for them because it's a more multi-sensory experience. Also, it's great for multitasking. And particularly at this time when students are looking at their screen a lot because of the distance learning, it allows them to just sit back rather than looking at something else, putting their earphones in and listening. Also, it will give them the opportunity to hear vocabulary read out correctly um, and to hear a strong, competent reader reading to them. Studies show that students make more progress when a strong reader reads out loud to them and that they engage with the book um, more meaningfully. Another great one and a personal favourite of mine are the Choose Your Own Ending books. These keep children entertained for hours and they certainly did for me as well. I think these are really great because they allow children to assume the role of the protagonist and make choices which determine the plot's outcome. Um, and again, I think reluctant readers sometimes feel they lack agency and power when reading, especially if they're reading with other people. So they feel that they're just going at the pace of everybody else or that perhaps the story is just leading in one direction. Whereas this, they get to choose the direction and they're given instructions on um, which next which steps they would like to take. And then they're led to different pages and they're just brilliant. They're really, really engaging. And I particularly recommend the Goosebumps ones. There's there's tons of these. Um, and they're just fantastic. Um, other material, we often find that students don't realise that some of their favourite movies have books. And because they already have an interest in the movie 
And because they probably already feel quite confident with the story because they've seen it played out in the movie, it's a great way to introduce reluctant readers to, to books because they're familiar with it. We already know that they like it. So if they've read, for example, The Hunger Games or the Percy Jackson series or Maze Runner, that would be a great place to start with them, reading that book with them. Um, because not only you know are they, are they interested by the story, but also we know that books have a lot more information about the plot most times. So students will learn more about and sorry, find more out about a plot they're already quite interested in and a story that they're already interested in. Um, so some of the strategies for engaging reluctant readers. I think it's really important to model reading yourself and to take on that role. And we're very lucky at WEC because we know that most of our parents read to their uh, their children and, and teachers read to the students very often. But it's important to show reluctant readers that fun and passion can be had in a book. Um, do the voices, act the roles. We know that students love it when teachers do the voices. We know that they love doing the voices themselves. We've had some remarkable accents and imitations um, at WEC you know, feel sad when the book is sad and laugh when you want to laugh um, and show them that it's more than just words. Because I think reluctant readers have negative perceptions around words. And um, it's really, really vital that we show them that books are emotions as well, emotions and thoughts. So if you model that for them, um, that's a great place to start. Um Reading as a family is, of course, very important. Not only are you modelling, but it, it's bringing you closer together. You can share those stories, you know, share, have conversations about the books um, so that we want to show reluctant readers that we don't just read for reading's sake, um, just to say, oh, I finished that book, that's the end of it, but to have a discussion um, and, and to form opinions about books as well. Also, Twitter's a great... Um, platform now for engaging with authors and I think reluctant readers like like it when we create links between books and the real world because they often don't really see the relevance of reading a book when they could be doing something else and if we show them that actually they can get something out of it and they can create a link to the, to the wider world that is more likely to engage them so there's a lot of authors and a lot of authors on Twitter now David Williams is very popular with the students at WEC and we know from Twitter that he often writes back to his fans. So if they tweet him or if they write to him, particularly at this time where, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's not as busy as he usually would be and, and authors aren't, they generally do tweet back and, and write back. And that's quite exciting. And also they might actually get a free book out of it. So there's always that as well. I'd also suggest um, visualisation. So again, this is back to the audio books, allowing students to, or allowing children to, maybe close their eyes, visualise the images to match the words, um, and just taking that time to set the scene for a story. So where are the materials then? At the minute, they can't go to the library, they can't go to bookshops, but we do have the internet and there are so many um, brilliant websites out there with free books. So I've just created a list here of some of the ones that we have found to be the most useful. Our favourite is the Z Library, and this seems to be the world's largest ebook library. Lots of the children's favourite authors are on there. We've already had a look. Um, again, Audible. So I've mentioned about audiobooks, but Audible at the minute have released quite a few free um, audiobooks. So they don't, students won't have to pay for them. There will obviously be some, but they can choose just to get the free ones. Um, PDF Drive is brilliant. I've already downloaded a few and we're reading them as a class. And there's some information here about um, the different websites and what they're most useful for. So I would highly recommend um, getting on here. You'll be able to find some of the material for reluctant readers, like the graphic novels, like the choose your own ending books as well. So really, I think um, the importance or the message that I want to deliver with this is that at the moment, we're all a little bit stuck in terms of um, our, you know, our options and what we can do. But it's important to be reminded that reading gives us some place to go when we have to stay where we are. So we want to give the students a place to go at the minute um, when those options are limited.